Good morning all you wonderful people. If you don't know who I am, my name's Taylor. I make videos on YouTube all about RV lifestyle. And today, we're gonna be talking about boondocking and stealth camping. What is boondocking? Well, boondocking is basically camping without power. So right now, I'm not hooked up to any power, and that would mean I'm boondocking. You can be at a campsite and essentially be boondocking if you don't have power or electricity. Stealth camping, on the other hand, is basically camping where you shouldn't be. So, kind of right here. I'm not really supposed to be camping here. I'm not really supposed to be spending the night, but I am anyways. And we're gonna be talking about some tips and tricks about boondocking and stealth camping and uh, I'll show you guys or tell you guys Where my favorite spots are and why those are my favorite spots Do you like it? When I was traveling and still to this day I have people come up and they want to you know see the Arctic Fox and they think it's really cool And especially when I hold the camera they're like, what do you do? And so it's nice just to point up at that sticker and and uh show off my YouTube channel. I'm quite proud of it. And I'm proud of it because you guys have made it what it is right now. And so thank you so much to, uh, to all you subscribers and viewers out there. All right, let's go for a drive. Boondocking is literally the greatest thing about owning an RV. You can pull over on the side of the road and sleep the night pretty much anywhere. And that's awesome. You have the ability to bring your home with you. But why in everybody's mind when you say boondocking, people say, hey, you can sleep the night at Walmart. I get it. Guys, Walmart's a great place, especially when you're traveling. Walmarts, rest stops, gas stations, they're your best friend. But for me, I full time and I'm going to be hanging around Victoria, the city of Victoria, for a few weeks and I don't want to stay in Walmart for three weeks. So I like to find myself a better boondocking area, a little bit more relaxing than this hectic Walmart. Don't get me wrong, I'm not better than Walmart, all right? I have spent the night at Walmart. I finally slept at a Walmart. I'm just saying there's so many more boondocking spots out there that are a little bit nicer. So let's go find them. At the, uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you my little spot that I found. And I've been staying there a few nights. It's, it's, like, it's like the perfect spot in my opinion. So when I was on the road and I didn't really know where I was, um, gas stations and rest stops were kind of my go-to, especially if I was just pulling in late at night, spending the night and then, and then traveling the next morning. Those were my go-to. Also, I found a much more enjoyable spot. Um, I, I kind of stayed away from Walmart just because it's so busy and I was a little bit uncomfortable with, you know, you're in your house, you're sleeping and there's cars and there's people walking around your camper. That's something that you have to get used to. But I found that hotel parking lots were, uh, were, were much more relaxing than Walmarts. And the reason for that is because the, the parking lot's usually quite full with vehicles. And so it's not like you're sticking out like a sore thumb in, a, in an empty parking lot. And if you show up a little bit later at night, sleep the night and then leave in the morning, nobody really knows you were there. Also, they may think you're a guest at the hotel. So I really, really enjoyed hotel parking lots. Boondocking uh, in the middle of nowhere, like when I was in, uh, in Utah, there's all this public land, so you can literally just pull off the road and set up camp. That's a that's very easy to boondock um, when you're outside of cities and uh, and kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So I kind of want this video just to be talking about boondocking in city limits. So right now I'm in Victoria and I've been here for a week or two, and I'm really trying my hardest to uh, to stay away from RV parks and 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 even you know I'm not even calling my friends to stay in their driveways or stay outside of their outside of their houses I really want to experience the real boondocking um, lifestyle that you have with a with a camper and so what I've been doing and kind of 
my guidelines and what I enjoy is I like to find quiet residential streets. And there's a few reasons for that. When you're on a quiet residential street, nobody really knows who you are or, or you know what I mean? Like you could pull up and jump in the back of your, your camper and someone's driving home to their house across the street. They pull in and they go, oh, that's a nice camper. I wonder if, you know, Joe, our next door neighbor, has some guests over. They just, they just don't know. The one trick with that and the one trick with boondocking in general is to get there late and leave somewhat early in the morning. Now, I don't really leave early in the morning because, you know, the light starts coming up and I'm sleeping and then it's like, oh, whatever. If I get kicked out, if someone knocks on my door, it's not a big deal. But get there late just so you're not, um, you know, arriving and, and, and people are coming home from work and they see your camper and, and constantly driving past you. So that is, uh, that's one tip that I would have for you. Another tip would be find level ground. So when you go to park at night, make sure you're somewhat level. Just the other night I was at my friend's house and I parked on his steep driveway. And I thought, oh, this may be a little uncomfortable, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So I pulled up, I actually turned my fridge off. If you, if you don't know, if your fridge is running off propane, it doesn't like to be on an incline, it likes to be level. So I turned my fridge off, kept my furnace on, and went to bed. Not only was it uncomfortable, because I'm pretty much sitting in a chair, um, my furnace stopped working at about four in the morning just completely stopped working and so actually I had to get up and, and, and drive to a different spot that was more level and then turn my furnace back on and it started working again. You always want to have your head a little bit higher up than your feet or, or level like a bed but you don't want to be the other way. You don't want to have your feet higher up than your head because then all the blood is going to rush into your head. Trust me, it is very, very uncomfortable. This would be a good spot. Actually, when I was visiting a friend, it was kind of like the same situation where I was just parked in front of a house. And uh, late at night, I came back to my camper and, and put my stairs down. And there's some lady just having a smoke on her, on her balcony there. And I was like, hey, she was like, hey. Then I just hopped in my camper and spent the night there. Another place that I really like to go is uh, construction areas. And that's actually where I've been spending the night the last five days um, in this little construction area. And the great thing about construction areas is there's usually not many people around. Usually there's so much street parking. And I like how nobody, it's not like a tight knit community. Like nobody really knows each other yet. Nobody really knows their neighbors yet. And so you roll up there and they, they don't know who you are. You could be, you know, building a house right there and sleeping in your camper while you do it. Nobody really knows. And so that, those, that's my number one go-to place when I'm, in, uh, when I'm in a city. Now this would be another great area. It's a uh, construction area. Nobody's around. But this is an area where you would want to get here later and leave earlier in the morning because construction crews are going to get here about 7, 8 o'clock. Um, one thing with this, I don't know if the camera will be able to, uh, to show you, but I'm on an angle such as this. And this is a perfect example of where I would just flip around in my bed. So instead of my head being on that side, my head would be on that side. So what I'll do is I'll just simply switch the sides and sleep this way. But what happens is I grab my pillows, oh, grab a couple pillows, and I start sleeping and it's all cozy and nice. And in the morning, all my pillows are down there because they fell off the bed. Now you, you're probably just saying, oh, well, why don't you just flip your truck around? Because I don't want people to be able to see, see those people over there. I don't want them to see my stairs down. I just feel better if my stairs are kind of hidden out of the way and then people can just see the front of my truck. I do that a lot with these. I, I always just like to back into parking lots or parking stalls, I should say. Just so, just so it's not like, hey, my stairs are down, I'm inside. You know, just a little bit of stealth, a little bit of stealth camping. Now, if I can't find a residential spot, which happens never, but if I can't, or if I don't really want to look for one, what I'll do, once again, I'll kind of get out of the main city core and, uh, in, and into the, uh, the suburbs of the, the big city. And I'll find commercial areas, like newer commercial areas, because usually with commercial areas, there's kind of vehicles 
th uh, scattered throughout the parking lot. And so if you kind of tuck yourself in behind one of those buildings and you know put your stairs down, you can sleep the night and nobody's gonna know you're there. That's That's one thing that I do usually look for. I don't want to be the only one in the parking lot. So like for here, like I'm the only one in this parking lot. And also, when I drive in this road here, it says no overnight camping. So when it says that, when it says no trespassing, no parking, I completely avoid it. Because what's the point of, of getting hassled in the morning or late at night uh, to move your camper? So at first, boondocking was really hard for me. Uh, I just didn't like the fact of being somewhere that I knew I really wasn't supposed to be. And for me, you know, <laughs> about to go to bed, you know, you're having a shower, you're, you're making a cup of tea, and there's people outside of your RV. You know, there's people walking their dogs. If you're in a Walmart parking lot, there's people ripping past you. And it was very uncomfortable for me. But what happened is just like anything you do, the more times you do it, the more comfortable you get. So I have completely avoided RV parks and I am trying to find new spots every single night. And it's starting to become enjoyable. I love when it starts to get dark out, you know, I've, I've finished uploading my video and then I just start driving around trying to fi uh, find a new spot to park. Uh, you know, you find a new spot to park late at night and then you have a different view every single morning, which is really, really neat and I'm, I'm really starting to enjoy that. So for all you new RVers that are a little bit nervous about boondocking and stealth camping in the middle of nowhere or on some side street, I promise you the more times you do it, the easier it's going to get to the point where you get excited to find a new spot to sleep every single night. It, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a game, you know? What can I get away with now? You know, so I, so I had the RV park, that's fine. Now I moved to a, uh, uh, a construction area with next to nobody in it. Now I went to a residential area where there are houses around. And next on your list, I guess, is a police station. The worst thing that's gonna happen is somebody coming up, knocking on your door and asking you to leave. And at that time, yeah, sounds good. I'll go to the one in a millionth other parking spot out there and stay the night. So that's really all that's gonna happen. In my head, I kept thinking that it would be so much worse. And then that's when I kind of realized, yeah, what is the worst that's gonna happen? By the way, I kind of, it's funny. I kind of want to be quiet around this area because I don't want to see people, I don't want people to see me right now. Because usually I show up here at night, but this is the prime spot this is my perfect spot and i've been staying here for the last four nights three four nights but if you know victoria at all i'm up top of uh, bear mountain and bear, bear mountain is a beautiful golf course although it snowed which it never does in victoria but usually this golf course is open all year round and uh it's a perfect area so there's new construction over here beautiful homes up this area construction over there and then this little condo complex, I think they must have this parking lot here. And you'll see in this parking lot, <clears throat> there's cars that haven't moved in forever. I'm kind of at the end of the parking lot, like this Land Rover hasn't moved forever. And so I come here every night and uh, just such a quiet area. Nobody's gonna bug you here. And I bet you, I bet you I could stay here for a, for even a few months until someone kind of caught on and was like, hey, you know, you can't really sleep in this parking lot. But there's no signs, there's no private property signs. So this is where I'm staying. So just down the street from this area, a five minute walk, I have a restaurant and pub. There is a hotel with a spa in it right there if I wanted to get uh, a massage. There's a gym and a hot tub in that building right there. And a coffee shop slash market. It says Mountain Market right there. And, 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 for $1,000 a month, I essentially have a home that backs onto a golf course. No property tax, a 
home that backs onto a golf course. Pretty amazing. That's the boondocking lifestyle, my friends. I think that I'm gonna wrap the video up here. It's always a pleasure talking with you guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and keep living that dream. And for those who are just getting into the boondocking world, it is amazing. Take those small steps and soon enough, every single morning, you, my friend, will have a different view and a different backyard. See ya, till next time, bye-bye.